You can relax, Newcastle fans, all you ones out there freaking out, considering burning your Newcastle shirt and supporting someone else. Calm the fuck down. We are spending money and there is a transfer through the door. It looks like Harvey Barnes is pretty much a done deal. And by the time this video gets posted, I think it will be a done deal. But it also means that Mr. Alan St. Maximin, as a lot of us expected, is leaving. So that debate, should we sell him, should we keep him, is he good, is he not? That's another one put to bed. And can I just say I'm relieved about that. There's lots to talk about Newcastle fans and what is picking up to be a very fast and productive end to the week on the transfer front, just as the players have jetted off to the US of A, which I will be closely following them, can I just say. So you don't want to miss this video, Newcastle fans. Do us a favour, make sure you stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you absolutely beautiful Newcastle fans. This will be the last video you will see of my face on UK time, on UK weather, and in this UK house. I will be posting this video as I am pretty much in the airport, or just about to board the plane, to follow Eddie Howe's mags over to the United States of America. I've just finished packing my bags, and I've got lots of things plan for this trip it's going to be absolutely incredible i'm getting in cars with people i'm that i've never met i'm sharing apartments with americans that i've never met there's tailgate parties you name it it's going to be absolutely incredible i've just finished me packing my case as well i'll wear that outside the empire state building oh yeah i can probably turn them inside out Cheeky pair in case I get lucky. It's something I would say if I was weird. They're not mine, Maggie. Haha, <laughs> the ball hat. If it's good enough for Benny Dorm, it's good enough for the USA. I've even been trying to learn the lingo. Touchdown, Alexander Isaac. Penalty feed goal surrendered by Sven Bartman. If any of our like black and white follower dudes want to like hang out this week, let us know because we're going to be fucking rocking the USA, man. Eddie Howe's fucking United States mags. Yeah, that's right. If you didn't hear that message, Newcastle fans, if you are watching this and you are in America, you're visiting or you live there and you are going to any of the states, Philadelphia, Atlanta or the New York, New Jersey area, drop me a message. I want to meet as many people as possible. My flag is about the size of a double King Master bed sheet, and I want as many signatures and messages on that for a keepsake for me as possible. Let's take over a ginormous flag with the American Toon Army. I cannot wait. I can not fucking wait. So, yeah, so there's plenty of them to come up and um, get me on that aeroplane. But before we talk about my lovely trip or anything America related, there's been plenty going on. And Mr. Harvey Barnes is the latest member of Eddie Howe's Champions League mags. Now, as I said at the start of this video, by the time this posts, I think he, he'll have signed. He's been to the training ground. He's been spotted inside the stadium, I think by St. Maximin on the roof with a sniper rifle. But it looks like it's done. It's just a, it's waiting for confirmation, which I assume will come tomorrow. Um, interestingly, on the day of the new third kit launch, which I'm gutted. I'm not going to be able to take to the States. I'm devastated. I'd love to buy one in the airport tomorrow morning, uh, Friday morning, but I, I, I think there's only a JD. I'm not going to be able to get one at Newcastle Airport. And there's certainly not a Newcastle club shop at Heathrow. So I'm good and I couldn't get that. But yes, the new shirt is coming out. We've been teased with it and Harvey Barnes will probably be announced as well. And he, he could be on my flight. Who knows? Me and Harvey Barnes could be sipping some drinks from the trolley together, talking all things Newcastle. I'm um, travelling probably is a little bit different class to him, so it's unlikely, but you never know. So... My initial thoughts, I'm over the moon. I really, really am. Um, I was talking to friends six months ago when Leicester was struggling about Harvey Barnes being a great sign and when we were linked with James Madison as well. I think he's exciting. He knows where the goal is, which is his, his biggest attribute. Um, he's direct. I love an old-fashioned winger. He's pacey. He'll work hard. That, that defensive quality, we know how much Eddie Howe loves that. I think to a degree he can be quite versatile and I think his... 
style of play, getting in behind and knowing where that goal is, is going to be so suited to our little pockets of space where we like to ping balls with Tenali now and Mr Bruno. You will actually, Joel Linton's that, that. Have a look. Where's Mr Barnes? There he is. He's between the lines. We know Bruno likes to slip a through ball. We know Tenali's going to be pinging balls left, right and centre and supporting that attack as well because he's not a number six. God shouted a bit louder for the fans at the back who think Tenali's coming in to just sit in the D. He's not. If that Rangers friend, he didn't tell you anything about Tenali, he's not a number six. He's a lot more than that. He can play there, but he's not a sitting number six. Oh, I ran over on that one, but that annoys the hell out of me when people keep saying that. So, Barnes offers so much. Now, I've seen plenty of hate comments in the last 24 hours on Harvey Barnes. And I'll touch on St. Maxim in a second. But Harvey Barnes, to be scoring 13 goals in a team as bad as what Leicester were last season, is nothing short of remarkable. This is a player who made his debut for Leicester in the Champions League. He's still raw to a degree. And I know people are going to say raw. and He's played in the Premier League for years. What I mean by that is he's, he can still be moulded. You know, he's had different managers. He's had different management styles. Eddie Howe has ch turned Joe Linton from one of the biggest flops in a, in a potential Ballon d'Or winner in a couple of years. That's what we are talking about with Eddie Howe. And if he can channel what we, can, what we already see Barnes has good with the goal scoring, with the eye for goal, with the movement, there's no reason he can't add assists to his game a little bit more as well because that's something he is lacking in a little bit, his assist record. So I'm excited about him. Is £38 million expensive while he's English? If his name was Javier Barrenes, you'd be talking maybe £20 million less. That's just the way of football and that is the way of Newcastle tax as well. We are going to get charged a lot because people know we are rich as fuck. Um, so I'm absolutely over the moon with the sign and, and I... I I, th I think people who are saying that he's shite and he's a downgrade are still the type of fans who are attached to a glamorous title. Like Tenali, I'm sure a lot of people have never even seen him play, but they were excited by him because he came from AC Milan and he played in the Champions League semi-final. Because Harvey Barnes has come from a relegated side, he doesn't have that glamorous Champions League wow factor that some Newcastle fans way too quickly are expecting and needing in the life now as fans. We are ahead of the trajectory and Eddie Howe knows what sort of personality he likes and knows exactly why should we why should we not back Mr Howard who he wants? I'm all for it. And his goal scoring record speaks for itself. And what do I always see on videos? Newcastle's midfield is lacking in balance with goal scoring. Look at last season. Bournemouth, West Ham, Leeds, Crystal Palace. We could have been challenging the top two if we'd scored more goals. We were so Lacking in a midfielder who was going to bang in double figures. And yes, before anyone jumps down my throat, Almiron had a purple patch. I'm aware of that, but I don't think that purple patch will return again. I don't. And to admit goals to our midfield is brilliant. And, and I welcome him with open arms. I cannot wait to see him develop under Eddie Howe and make his debut and hopefully do well in America. Would be nice. Now, this obviously means that Mr. Alan St. Maximin, it looks like he's going to have to pave way. Now, all of the rumours and things that we discussed, I've discussed on previous videos about our finances being affected by having to get players out, looks to be true. Eddie Howard said that Alan St. Maximin's our only sellable asset with, with regards to any value. Darlow, Hendrick, God, you're scraping the barrel, aren't you? There's not much there to make any substantial money. We've had to make this, this deal to try and get a player in. Now, we don't know, as I make this, whether Maximin is going to leave, definitely. But it, with Barnes almost being confirmed, it looks that way. Now, that has again been met by sadness. Not only has it been met by sadness, from lots of quarters, it's been met by Harvey Barnes is a downgrade. Harvey Barnes is a downgrade. I'm not so sure. I'm really not. And before I say anything more about Maximin, I'm grateful to him. He did wonders for us under Mr. Mike Ashley and Steve Bruce. He was one of the main catalysts that we got off our feet in the very few times that we did with excitement under them. He helped us stay up because he was carrying us in an attacking sense, him and Mr. Callum Wilson. And no one is forgetting about that. But, but what he did then is not an argument on why he should stay now. And Alan St. Maximin's stats speak for themselves over the last couple of years. You can ram injuries down my throat, but that doesn't help his cause in my opinion. Yes, he might be injured, but when is that going to stop? His assists aren't great. His final product isn't great. We know he hasn't got a great shot, and he just hasn't done it consistently enough. But the biggest factor as a cloud over the top of all of this is I do not think, and I've never thought, he's an Eddie Howe player. 
I don't think Eddie Howe has ever been convinced. If you would have asked me, would Eddie Howe sign him in the window for Newcastle? The answer is no, a million Sundays. His work rate, his surrendering of possession with the way he likes to play and take players on, it just doesn't fit the Eddie Howe mould. And I'm all for the Eddie Howe mould because the Eddie Howe mould has got us avoiding relegation in substantial um, um, circumstances and Champions League football in a year and a half. So I'm all for him. And Maximin's kind of time in the sun at Newcastle just feels like it's come to an end. He's cryptic messages. He's in and out of the team. He doesn't really look like he has a best friend at Newcastle when you look at training ground and like footage at the end of matches. I don't know. And he needs to go to a club like Steve Bruce did who puts their arm around him and says, you're our main man. Similar to Robert, similar to Ben Arthur. These flair players need to know that they are the man carrying that midfield and that attack. And he hasn't done that at Newcastle. I actually think he's changed his playing style to suit Eddie Howe when he started passing the ball more and you don't get the same player. Am I sad to see him go? Yes. Do I think he, he could have offered us something massively different in the Champions League and whatnot next season? Yes, of course I do. St. Maximin is a unique box of frogs. There's only about three or four of St. Maximins in Europe. Um, the tricks, the flicks, the change of direction, the change of pace. And I understand that's why so many fans are sad to see him go. But when you are talking about Newcastle building a squad for FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Premier League, Champions League, I don't know about you, I want to see us battle on all fronts. I want another cup final. I want a good cup run. I don't just want to be Champions League all eggs in that basket. I, I, I want to, you know, we've tasted Wembley. It was beautiful drinking from that cup. I want to taste the, 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 the Champagne Cup from the trophy lid. That's what I want to taste in the next couple of years. And St. Maximin has allowed that to happen. This is going to affect financial fair play so much. One of my friends has educated me that St. Maximin's sale means we can potentially now spend £120 million the way FFP works. Um, with regards to getting 30 in in one window, that means, it, depending on how we sign players on longer contracts, we can actually bring a lot in now. If that's the case, and Livermento is being strongly linked, I'm even more for the sale of St. Maximin. I thank him for all he's done. And if you really want to compare Harvey Barnes and St. Maximin, I've done that. I've got access to stats now on assists, ball carries, goals, um, predicted goals. And Alan St. Maximin is lower than Barnes in most. And I know you can argue Barnes has played more, so you've got to take these stats with a pinch of salt last season. But the, even in ball carry, which surprised me, Maximin's only narrowly beaten it on these spiders, these spider graphs. Uh, an assist, sorry. Um, and we talked about Barnes. That's an area he could maybe work on. But Harvey Barnes is stronger on last season's stats in almost all areas. And if you're going to compare the two, that's silly because they're totally opposite players. But this transfer and these two almost swapping places to me makes total sense. Anyone who tells me that St. Maximin has been a good dynamic under Eddie Howe for us and has, has fit the mould and felt right as part of the club compared to his time under Steve Bruce. I think you lie to yourself um, through your St. Maximin love and tinted glasses. That's what I personally think. I love the man. I love what he's been able to do. On his day is the term that I will always associate to Maximin. I don't have as strong affiliation to him as what I do Robert and Ben Arfa. We thank him for his time. But if this sale to Saudi Arabia allows us to sign another three to four players going into a busy, busy, crazy season, it's another masterstroke in my opinion. And that's no discredit to the work St. Maximin's done for us or him as a player. I just think this one makes sense. Newcastle fans, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Harvey Barnes, I'm going to see it because of when this video will be posted, has signed for Newcastle. Alan St. Maximin looks like he's going out. Are you sad to see him go? Do you think it's a downgrade? Um, I'll argue that one until I'm blue in the face and I don't see it as a downgrade. But we don't know what the future holds. Do you think £38 million is a little bit too much? Let me know your thoughts on all of this. Um, and if you haven't noticed, I have upgraded for America. New microphones, wireless microphones. I've got hands now for videos. Um, the USA content is going to be coming, Newcastle fans. As I've said, I am going over there. I'm going to a fan event where I'm going to meet Shola Ramiobi and Shea Given. I've got a tailgate party. I've got a pre-match get-together party for Philadelphia. I've got a pre-match get-together party for... Atlanta the day before the game and the day before the game in New York. So basically, I'm going to be hungover on every match day. Marvellous. But I'm going to meet so many amazing people. There's going to be so much going on, so much to, for me to absorb. I've just signed up to an open training session with the players today, which I might have to go straight from the airport to in Atlanta on Tuesday morning. 
So that's going to be crazy. Make sure you whack that like and whack that subscribe. If you haven't already seen my match vlog for Rangers, which was mental, 8,000 Geordies, and we, we hired out a nightclub, just go down and click that one. And the support, as ever, for Black and White Banter has been absolutely amazing, and I cannot wait to just unwind on what has been a really stressful 2023 for me. Have some time away from my beautiful dog and just enjoy myself. I'm a fan first, a content creator second, and that's exactly what I'll be on this trip. Newcastle fans, if you've liked this video, whack that like, whack that subscribe, and I'll see you dudes on the flip side of the United States with a pint of lager and a corn dog. See you later, dudes. Hey, we're the lads.